Israel. Palestine. This is the birthplace of Christianity and Judaism, and is also sacred to Muslims. Its holy sites are places of pilgrimage for millions. The Jews trace their history here to the time of the Bible, when God promised the land to Abraham. But the Palestinians are also descended from the ancient biblical peoples and from the Arab conquerors of the seventh century. But for the Jews, expelled from this land over the centuries by invaders, its spiritual legacy is one they've never relinquished. The land of Israel occupies a very important part in the liturgy and thought of Judaism and has down the ages, so that there is a very real and intimate connection between Judaism and the land of Israel, quite apart from the physical presence of Jews in the Holy Land throughout the ages. The persecution of European Jews in the 19th century led many to believe they would only be safe in their own state, meaning a return of the diaspora to the land of Zion. This objective gave rise to a political movement called Zionism. The Zionists that said there is no way that we will be able to overcome all the hurdles and the obstacles and the hardships of achieving it if it's not in the only place where the uh, uh, mental resources or emotional resources will be activated and it is the land of Israel, uh, namely what was Palestine. The long migration of the Jews back to their homeland was aided by the start of the First World War. The British were looking for allies in the Middle East to counter the Ottoman Empire, which had sided with the Central Powers. The Arabs were demanding national independence from the Ottomans. The British backed them. Meanwhile, the Russians were wavering in their support for the Allies. So Britain, believing that Jewish influence in Russia was strong, also backed Zionists' claims for a homeland in Palestine. The Arabs and the Zionists felt more and more that conflicting promises had been made to each of them promising Palestine. With the Germans defeated, the Middle East was divided between the French and the British. The British were to govern Palestine. Britain's decision to support the Jewish claim for a homeland, as laid down in the Balfour Declaration of 1917, was to have drastic repercussions on the future of the Holy Land. The British mandate was designed specifically to bring about the creation of a national home for the Jews, which ultimately meant a state, with no similar commitment to self-government or independence or statehood for the indigenous inhabitants, in other words, the Palestinian Arabs. Encouraged by the attitude of the British, 35,000 Jews emigrated to Palestine over the next four years. Palestinian unease about the influx led to riots against the Jews and the British, culminating in the three-year Arab revolt of 1936. The Palestinians were crushed by the British and their leadership destroyed. The Jews continued to arrive, although the British started to limit their numbers. The end of the Second World War forced the issue of recognizing a homeland for the Jews. Six million Jews were exterminated in the Holocaust, and the survivors were determined that it would never happen again. Rejected throughout Europe, but still seeking a safe haven, the Jews looked to the land of Palestine again, a land that the Jewish Bible, the Torah, calls Israel. When they arrived in Palestine, by and large, they were going there because they had nowhere else to go. But the Palestinian Arabs didn't want to facilitate the immigration of further Jews. To keep the peace, the British limited the influx, turning boatloads away. Horrified by the British attitude and fearful that they might lose their claim to a homeland, some Zionists turned to terrorism. But as these early pictures show, the British got tough. At the beginning, we trusted the British that they were going to give us the homeland for the Jews. And slowly by slowly, the uh, British started to retreat from the mandate. And I decided, and the only way is that I've got to fight to free my country. But the Arabs weren't going to easily concede their country. One of the most dramatic incidents was the bombing of the King David Hotel by a Jewish terrorist group in 1946. After further bloodshed, the British decided to hand the problem 
to the newly created United Nations. In November 1947, the UN met to vote on a solution. Recent images of the Holocaust were fresh in the minds of many Americans. It is my attitude that the American government couldn't stand idly by while the victims of Hitler's madness were not allowed to build new lives. The proposed solution was the partition of Palestine into Arab and Jewish areas. The United Kingdom, abstain. The United States, yes. The resolution of the Dutch Committee for Palestine was adopted by 33 votes, 13 against, 10 abstentions. But whilst partition was supposed to end conflict, the United Nations decided that Palestine should be divided into separate Jewish and Arab states. The Palestinian Arabs were allocated sections to the northwest, in the center, a strip by the sea, and land on the Egyptian border. The Zionists were given what remained. Jerusalem was to be controlled by the UN, but the Palestinians rejected the plan. Nasser al-Din al-Nashashibi was a member of one of Palestine's most influential families. When they hear that the United Nations voted for the uh, implementation of that decision of partition, I remember my father was next to me here in that house and was listening to the radio uh, 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 about the vote of uh, the, the, the dividing Palestine, and he said, Mark, mark it, my, my son, this is the beginning of bloodshed in the whole area. There will never be peace again. The Palestinians protested at the division of their homeland, but the Jews were determined to establish their own state. In April 1948, there was a surprise attack at the strategically important Palestinian village of Deir Yassin. Deir Yassin was particularly ugly. The original number was thought to be about 240 or 50 civilians killed uh, almost entirely after the village had surrendered. Uh, people going into houses one by one, machine gunning, lobbing in grenades through windows, taking people out, lining them against walls, disemboweling pregnant women, throwing survivors down wells, and eventually parading the remaining survivors, stripped naked, in trucks through western Jerusalem. As news of the massacre spread, Palestinians fled in panic, and a new wave of refugees was created. We lost everything. We lost our uh, furniture. My uncle had a library of 60,000 books, and it was all taken and burned and looted. All our carpets, all our... Uh, Surely, or our money, whatever you want to call it, was taken. We really suffered financially and physically and emotionally. The Jews had won the first battles, but the long war had only just begun. In seeking a peaceful homeland free of persecution, Zionists caused the displacement of an estimated 700,000 people just over half the Arab population of Palestine. For most Palestinians, it meant leaving behind houses, livestock, land, trees, memories, um, religious sites, uh, saints' tombs, gra you know, graves of, of uh, family, and so on. Refugees fled to Arab countries, the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. 150,000 stayed in the newly created Israel. A day before the British left, on the 14th of May 1948, David Ben-Gurion declared the birth of the State of Israel. We declare a Jewish state in the ancient land of Israel. It will be called the State of Israel. Right now, just I think three days ago, um, the, the government uh, was was discussing a law that will send to prison for, free, for three years anyone who will mention the Nakba. 
in any way in a ceremony or something of the sort. Now that for, for Palestinians living in Israel is, is terrible. I mean, that is their national, um, it's their national identity. And that it's just taking it away from them uh, artificially by saying, you know, if you do this, if you remember your own history, you'll be sent to prison. As you, as you know, uh, Jerusalem occupied it from the Israelis and West Bank. And sometimes happens uh, things, uh, tourists are afraid to come here. No, it's because Palestinians in a very miserable uh, situation. We have uh, this wall who uh, made the Israelis separated the part, uh, the families, separated the, the Palestinians' places, the villages, cities, yeah. also point checks, uh, also very difficult for us. So now 61 years passed, no freedom. We hope something good happen to, to change this situation. The Palestinians now, there's no hope for them. No hope. How they live. Some places, the war cut it two parts. Houses. Cut it two parts. We need justice. We need just justice. We, the Arab did not harm anybody and we did not like anybody to harm us. I want to live in my house with peace.